Hi, Sean and Ashton with a basic vector works tutorial on a topic I probably should have covered it some time ago. It's kind of essential. It's dimensions in vector works. I assume you're using vector works because at some point you're going to need to create measure drawings, drafting, and so these dimension tools are important. I, I touch on it very briefly at the end of the basic uh, tutorials, but there's a lot more to learn. I had a, a viewer write in a little bit and say he was having a hard time finding where the tools were and how they worked. And so I think I got him sorted out, but it inspired me to to create three tutorials here. This first one is going to be just the basics of the constrained and unconstrained dimensions and how they work. The second is going to talk about how to create your own set of dimension standards if you want your dimensions to look a particular way. And the last one, we're going to take a look at all the other things that are here in the tool sets uh, in the dimension notes drawer of the tool sets. There's a lot of tools here. Some of them are kind of one trick ponies, but there's some fun things to learn about here uh, in the in the dimension notes drawer. So let's get started. But before we do, I want to just make sure that you've got your snapping set up here. This is a lot easier if you get your snaps on, uh, particularly the objects, snap to objects on here is really important. So if you double click on one of these, you can open up the smart cursor settings and just make sure that you get it. You've got these checked on here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I would recommend that you take a look at, uh, I think it's number seven of my basic tutorials that covers the, the snapping and um, smart cursor palette. So check that out before you begin. It'll make this whole process a lot easier. Now, where to find these tools? I have them up in my basic tool sets, although the, the guy that was um, writing to me said he couldn't find it up there. So maybe different configurations have it in a different place, but I've got the Spotlight workspace open and there they are right up in my basic tool sets. If you can't find them there for any reason, they're the first two, first two tools in the dimension notes drawer of the tool set. But hey, even better, just learn the keyboard shortcuts N and M. So Nancy and Mary, N for the uh, the constrained and M for the unconstrained. Now you might think like the line tool, usually we're in the unconstrained mode, right? Because we, we want to be able to go off on any angle we want. Well, uh, that's not really true for the dimension lines. I would recommend using the unconstrained linear dimension tool only for measuring the length of a diagonal line. And I'll show you why. They, they, they behave a little differently than you might expect. Um, so more often than not, you're probably going to be using the constrained linear dimension tool. So hit your N key. No modifiers required. Just hit the N key. And you can see it's jumped into the default setting of this tool. So the way this works, I'll walk you through the steps for this. So what I'm going to do here is find my little rectangle. And I'm just, there's no dragging involved in here. It's just three clicks and some mouse moves. So I'm going to touch my cursor down here till I get that screen hint top left and then datum pops up a second later because my cursor is resting there. Uh, either one of those will work. I'm going to click left click once and I'm extending off this little ray here because I could be doing a dimension down the side here. Let me get a little more centered. Um, and so I could be doing this dimension but I'm actually going for this dimension so it doesn't know which way I'm going yet. So it's got this little dashed line extending off of it. So what I'm going to do is just touch my cursor till it gets the next screen hint, the top right. Now I'm going to click, left click again, and just push off of the edge of the object. No dragging involved here, it's just three clicks. So my third click is going to come from when my offset here looks the way I want it to look. So that looks fine there. I'm going to go ahead and click again, and there we go. Seven foot, seven and three quarter is the, the length of the side of this rectangle. So let's do what the other, find out what the other side is. So now I'm going to move to the other side, and you can see my uh, hint is insertion point, and that's the end point of this dimension line. So you, you might think, well, where did the top left go? Well, it's the same spot because we inserted this dimension line on the top left. Uh, we just had this dimension line selected. So anytime you see any sort of screen hint, you know that you're there. So I'm going to click and then touch this bottom left corner. There it is. Another click and just push off from the edge of the object and click again. And there we go. Oh, it's a square. Seven foot, seven and three quarter on both sides there. So let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm just going to grab this top one and zoom in. We'll take a look at what's going on with this line. Grab the object info and we're done. I mean, that's it. That We've got a dimension line and we can move on and do some other things here. But I do want to walk you through some of what's going on in the object info for dimension. First of all, uh, dimension, the dimension class is created by default when you start a new document. It's always there and dimensions automatically get put in that class and that's handy you can you can hide dimensions if you want to you know print a, a, a clean version of your drafting or something that's nice these should be familiar to you length I'm going to come back to this here in a second but 
dimension standards here, architecture by default for me at least, maybe it's different in a different workspace, but I've got architecture. This is where we can choose our own style of the lines, the dimension lines we wanna create, but that's the next tutorial. This offset is talking about how far the text is offset from the line. And there's a bunch of other things in here that should be fairly, uh, uh, Oh, actually, the dimension offset is for this line here. Not That's the text offset is down here. I can set that to zero and make that pop right on. Oh, but it turned it upside down because I flipped the text. There we go. Um, you can make that uh, set right on top of the line. Um, but I'll show you how to do that in the next tutorial. The precision is what I'm after down here. So uh, this right now is a, we've got a little fraction on here, 7 foot 7 and 3 quarter. Uh, be aware that you can round up or down. Uh, with this little precision box. And I recommend that you use this very carefully. If you're on deadline and you're getting ready to print something and you snap a dimension and you know it's off by a little fraction, for some reason Vectorworks loves to tack on eighths of an inch or remove an eighth of an inch. So it should be eight foot long, but it's seven foot 11 and seven eighths. Um, and you know that there's no way, once the ink hits the paper, there's no way anybody's gonna be able to get a scale rule in there and see the difference in those lines. Um, and you're in a hurry, you don't wanna fix it. You can do this, you can just grab it and it's rounded up. So in this case, if we round it up to half an inch, um, it's gonna go to the next half inch, which in this case is seven foot, eight inches. So it hasn't changed the length of the line. The length is the same, the length of our object is the same, but all we've done is changed what the text reading is. I can go back to one eighth and get those fractions on there. In fact, we might even go a little higher and, nope, it's seven and three quarter. Sometimes you, you know, you've even go a little bit higher. I mean, all the way to one six sixty fourth of an inch if you're doing like mechanical stuff. By the way, if, if that's too precise, if one eighth is too precise, say you're a landscape architect and you, and you, you are never gonna worry about an eighth of an inch, um, then you can go into the Vectorworks settings and set the default precision to a whole number or half an inch or whatever, whatever makes sense for you. Um, so again, a lot of what's in here is pretty straightforward, but let me show you a couple of things that you can do here as well. For example, let me just mess this up a bit. If I uh, missed, if I'm going along and I clicked on one corner and then I click on the other corner and I realize I missed, there's a couple of things that you can do. Honestly, I would just probably just delete and do it again because it's so fast, creating a dimension line so fast. Rather than mess around with these other, other ways, um, just do it again. But you can always go in here and fix it by just moving your cursor onto the, the uh, control point there, the insertion point, just click on it, and now you can drag it anywhere you want, and you can snap it right back to where it belongs. So that's one way to do it. Another way that you can do it is if you're off a little bit and you know that you've got the actual length up here, well, you can knock this down, or we can actually type it in. We know that it's seven, seven and three quarter, so we'll put 0.75 in there, and oh, did like that. Seven, seven, here we'll just do three quarter. And then that's actually changed the length of it. But look what happened. So because I had this control point selected, instead of this control point, it actually took the extra overage off of the wrong side. So now both sides are off. So I'm gonna just undo that. To fix that, all I need to do is select this button because that corresponds with this side and that's the side that I don't wanna mess with. So it's gonna now take off the extra off of this side, just like it does if you're using the control points to change the size of a rectangle or something, um, you can do it here. So if we go back in here and type seven, seven and three quarter, and now we've fixed it. That's a pretty tedious way to go about fixing it. I'd usually just, like I say, just delete and start over again or grab it and yank it over. But know that, that, that's, that this length is not a, 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 there's a, it's not a static field. You can go in and change things on it. Something else though that's important though, let me, I've been messing with this one, so let me use the side dimension. So right now it says seven, seven and three quarter, just like the other. Well now if I go in here and I type in eight feet, notice what happened. It actually changed the dimension to eight feet, but because I've got these two corners snapped, it actually changed the size of the rectangle to eight feet. So now if we look at our, the height of our rectangle here, it is indeed eight feet. So by changing that dimension, if, if you've got both points anchored to the object, you can actually change it. We'll make it seven, seven and three quarter again. So that actually went back to the, the actual size of the rectangle. Changing the length in the dimension object info palette, if both corners are attached to an object, will actually resize the object. So be careful about that. Um, so anyway, let's take a look before we run out of time here on, let's see, let me do the uh, constrained and unconstrained, show you the difference between those two. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the unconstrained, remember that's the keyboard shortcut M. And now what I'm gonna do is do the exact same steps. I'm gonna go to the endpoint, 
I'm gonna touch this upper endpoint back off, and now I've got uh, eight foot nine and three quarters. So that's that's a, a, a unconstrained dimension that's actually measuring the length of this. So let me delete that one. <clears throat> go back to the constrained. We'll do the exact same thing, and you'll see what happens here. So if I go over to here, now I can either say, well, what's the distance between those two points horizontally or vertically? But that's basically all you've got. So if you want to know what is the length of this diagonal line, that's where you use the unconstrained dimension tool. Um, and that's pretty much the only thing I think it's really kind of useful for because if I go over here, which you could do, like say you wanted to know what the difference in those height, heights were, you could select an endpoint, touch on an endpoint, extend off a dimension line, and get basically the same readout as you would if you used the unconstrained tool. But if you wanted this, you just do this, and there you go. Not only is that faster, but you've also uh, don't have the problem here. Let me delete the other one. You don't have the problem of this control point being way off of the the actual uh, object that you're referencing. So really, it, it, unless you're doing a diagonal line, that's really the only real reason to use the unconstrained linear dimension tool. Uh, all the rest of the time, you're gonna wanna use um, the, the constrained tool. Let me just go over here to this shape and show you a couple of things. You've got the ability now to have the dimension lines extend right over to the object, just like you would in regular drafting. I, I'm referencing these two corners here, so my leader lines are going across my object, um, and it does that automatically for you. So you, you, there's no need for you to kind of say, I'm gonna pull off of here and, and reference over here. And, you, know, you could do that if you wanted to, if you didn't want those leader lines extending but or control the length of the line, the offset, but and more often than not, you're just going to snap to the shape even if it's over your other object and get what you want. Let me show you a couple of these other modes though in the basic tools. So back to our uh, constrained, we've got a couple of different modes that are kind of fun to play with here. The first one is the constrained chain mode. So if I go ahead and grab that one there, I can go down to this shape and we'll do it with this little tooth at the bottom. See how the cursor is a little different. When I'm in the, the chain mode, I'm going to go ahead and click an endpoint, and I get the same extension line like I get before, but now I can click on another endpoint, back off just like I do before, but I'm not done yet. It's still going for the next one, waiting for me to enter the next point. So now I can snap to this corner, there's another line, and now I can snap to that corner and double click now that I'm done, and now I've got a nice little chain of dimensions. They're all lined up, and I did that all with like a couple of clicks. So instead of having to do this dimension and then this dimension and this dimension and making sure they line up, that uh, chained mode is really useful. However, you might have a situation where you might want to use the baseline mode. So for example, say you've got a row of boxes or something and they're up against a wall and you know that you're not, you know the boxes, they're already built. You, you don't, you're not too worried about the actual dimensions of the boxes. What you're worried about is the spacing of the boxes. And you know that uh, the first one is going to be right up against a wall. So let's go and pretend this is where the wall is, and I'll click that corner, and I'll say, well, what is the distance from this corner to this corner? So there's one dimension. It's five feet. Now I'm going to go over here to the next box and say, well, that box is 10 foot away from the wall, and that box is 15, and you get the point. Double click when you're done. All of these dimensions are all referencing the original click. That can be really useful if you're trying to get you know, the heights of things off of the floor or, or whatever, where you, ne you need this kind of pattern. Uh, that's this last one. Honestly, I got to tell you, I don't really know what the ordinate mode is. I don't use it. Um, I suspect it has something to do with landscape architecture. Uh, but I do want to show you, I'm going to skip over that one in my ignorance and show you this last mode though. I'm going to select this little box here and show you what this last mode does. I always forget this is here. It's kind of a fun thing. It really can save you a lot of time. That's the selected objects mode. I'm going to click into that mode in the, I'm back in the uh, constrained linear dimensions here. And because I have a box, there's really only a couple of dimensions I can go for here. There's no point in like dimensioning like from here to here in the middle of the box. I'm going to go for these corners. So because I'm in this mode, all I need to do is click once and extend off. That's three foot six is the size of that box. Because the only possible dimension, I didn't have to click on that corner and click on that corner. And then I'm just clicking once and moving off four foot. So three foot six and four foot. So the only real choices you get here are you know, how far is your offset? You just click on the side you want to put your dimension on and you move back the offset and there you go. That's kind of fun to use that mode. And the really good reason why you might want to use that is that if you've got a whole bunch of things really close and you're struggling with trying to not select the object next door, uh, you can just jump into this mode and throw those dimensions on very quickly, being confident that it's exactly the corners of the shape 
that you are dimensioning. So when we come back, I'll take a look at in the next tutorial. I recommend that you, you uh, watch the next two and we'll talk about all these other different kinds of tools. Still have a few more shapes to dimension here. And we'll talk about the dimension standards coming up next. Thanks a lot.